Stan Jabalisco here. A viewer of my channel and reader of my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, sixth edition, has requested that I go through some of the schematic diagrams in chapter 26 and discuss the function of each individual component. Now what you're looking at right now is figure 26-13 which is a basic Armstrong oscillator uh, which uh, it, it's basically just a conceptual diagram of what an oscillator uh, is supposed to do. Uh, but it'll always work. An Armstrong oscillator is guaranteed to work. Uh, well, you know, guaranteed within reason. What you see here is a uh, an N-channel junction field effect transistor, the source, the gate, and the drain here acting as a class A amplifier. Now the reason why this acts as an amplifier is because it's going to amplify its own output in order to cause feedback, positive feedback, which will make it start chasing its own tail and amplifying its own output over and over again and the result is going to be what you might call howling. Uncontrollable howling except for the fact that a tuned circuit will govern the frequency at which this howling occurs. So let's uh, take a look at what happens. Let's let's uh, these uh, two components, the resistor and the capacitor, serve to pr provide the standard proper bias for the source of a field effect transistor. The resistor elevates the source above ground for DC, but the, the bypass capacitor ensures that the source will remain at ground, but um, effectively at ground for radio frequency signals, and this is intended as an RF radio frequency oscillator. So it starts out with some sort of noise at the input just in the very first few microseconds it starts out that way. That noise is amplified and appears at the output um, on the drain circuit and then it goes to a transformer which reverses the phase because the input and output of a class A JFET amplifier are always 180 degrees out of phase. You have to reverse the phase and then you're going to be feeding signal back into the gate in phase with the signal that came out of the um, collector. Well that's going to cause oscillation. That's going to cause the thing to chase its own tail. But at what frequency? This resistor provides the proper bias for the gate. Uh, proper DC bias for class A amplification. This transformer reverses the phase as I said. It's a powdered iron core transformer most likely uh, a toroidal core transformer and it says right here it reverses the phase of the feedback. It, it's connected so that the phase is reversed on the way out and reversed again back in and you get in phase feedback this resistor right here will, assuming that the DC resistance of the coil is negligible, provide uh, some positive bias for the collector. Otherwise, the circuit wouldn't work at all. You'd have no voltage there. So it, this is just a Class A amplifier with its output fed back into its input um, in phase with itself. So it howls at a frequency that's determined by the setting of this variable capacitor along with the inductance of the secondary of the transformer. It's a tuned inductance capacitance circuit and it tends to favor one frequency so that all of the feedback will occur at that frequency. So instead of uh, the kind of howling that you get in a 
public address system when it's out of control, you get a very controlled howling, a very precise howling. In fact, you get oscillation at a specific radio frequency. The blocking capacitor here ensures that whatever is at the output, probably an amplifier, um, although you could conceivably place a key in here, a Morse code key, and send Morse code with this as just an oscillator all by itself and connect an antenna <laughs> or a transmatch to an antenna here, but you want this blocking capacitor here to prevent any DC uh, disturbance of the bias at the collector. So there you have it. It's just basically a class A junction field effect transistor amplifier in this case n channel that's it has positive feedback at a controlled frequency an armstrong oscillator this is called you could use a bipolar transistor here either npn or pnp as long as it's biased for class a or this could be a p channel junction of a field effect transistor in which case you'd simply reverse the polarity of the power supply. Very basic, the most elementary possible amplifier, uh, well, amplifier and oscillator, uh, which demonstrates and is oftentimes used to demonstrate the principle by which all oscillation takes place positive feedback at a controlled frequency. Again, this is figure 26-13 from my book, Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 6th edition. But you will find a similar figure in almost every uh, edition of the book. It may not happen to be in chapter 26, but it's going to, you're going to find it in the uh, chapter on amplifiers and or oscillators. You'll find it. Look up Armstrong Oscillator in the index if all else fails. And this, I t took great pains uh, to ensure that this book has a good index. Teach Yourself Electricity and Electronics, 6th edition, should be available on Amazon. And you can get to there from my website or at a bricks and mortar bookstore if you request it there and if you can find such a place anymore <laughs> pretty soon everything will be virtual and then one coronal mass ejection from the sun and we will be back in the stone age but if you have we'll have one of these oscillators and a good battery you'll still be able to send signals into the void Stan Jibalisco signing off until next time so long.